Welcome to Pop-Up PD. My name is Tanya Drake. Today, with the help from Christine Weatherman, I have prepared a session on providing feedback in Schoology to students. And then we're going to flip the script and talk about how students go and find the feedback you gave them. I have put this together uh, using a slides presentation that you can get to if you want to scan that QR code. Inside of the slides presentation, which will make available, I will also embed this video so that it's right inside of the slides. I am going to use student work today, and one student is a real student that has agreed to allow me to show their work up on screen, and the other is a colleague of mine who uh, uses one of my courses as a sandbox to prepare some of his own videos, and so I've got an assignment in there from him. From the teacher standpoint, we're going to look at a couple of different methods of providing feedback. We're going to look at the annotation tools in Schoology. Those are these tools that are on the tops of assignments. We're going to look at submission activity notes. We're going to look at grade comments. And we're going to talk about Schoology directed messages versus sending an update to a class. Then we're going to flip the script. We're going to talk about having students find the feedback that you provided, either on a formative or, or a summative assignment. And in that, we're going to look at student notifications, how they find the grades and grade comments, and how they find the annotations and submission activity notes that you created for them. I'm going to start out with this assignment. This assignment is a sandbox assignment that was created uh, for another video. In here, there is some simple text, so we can use the text tools. I'm going to start out by using this highlight tool. I can highlight sections of text. And if I click on the style button, I can even choose what style I want them in or what color highlight is. So I could use different colors to mean different things as I highlight things in a student assignment. As you see, it'll put a note over here uh, telling you that I've made a highlight. I can also use this text cross out feature and choose some words that we want to cross out. Uh, there are also some different styles in that one that we can use. Now I'm going to switch over to a student work. This is a recent assignment, and the student has agreed to let me put them up on the screen. I'm going to show you how I will use a annotation tools uh, on a hand-drawn assignment. This one is submitted just on line paper as a photograph. Uh, we did that because it is a, a math-heavy problem, and typing this out would have been really complicated, but drawing it is easier. In here, I want to draw attention to the fact that he did a good job including his units, 0.75 inches here, and so I'm going to make a note that says, nice work, including units, and save that. But I'm also going to point out that his units are missing over here. This is one of the things we're working on is our drawings should also have units. I also have used over here the submission activity notes. He made a note here that he was um, did it wrong the first time and went back and redid it. And I put a little note in here saying respect, but I also went over here and said, thanks for working through it until you got it. I could also add other features over here. I could use this to do an audio or video recording. I can't do it now because the microphone's in use for this video, but if I click on this, it'll pop me up with a little screen. It can choose audio only or audio and video, and I can make feedback. I've heard from one of our teachers that teaches world language that they've used that to provide feedback to students in the language that they're teaching. So on an assignment in maybe a French three class, they're providing comments back in French, and the students are then commenting back and giving responses in French uh, right in the feedback. So a different way to use this. Also, if you are working with younger students who don't yet have maybe the typing capabilities, there's also a place here to add a file. You could add some sort of reference file you're looking for, but I've also found it's a fun way to add a little sticker where you can go in. So I gave Mr. Lyson a very nice sticker. Not something I often do with my students, but definitely an option that you could use with yours. For the next type of feedback, I'm going to go to Mr. Lyson's assignment uh, where he, I have not yet graded this assignment. Um, he has done a stellar job submitting me an assignment with random blank words, so I'm going to give him a four, but I want him to um, include a picture next time. 
And this is something I want to give to feedback to him. So I'm going to click on the show to students. You could also use this if you are keeping track of something correspondence with the student and you want to keep track of it yourself and you don't want them to see it. You would just uncheck that button. So I'm going to hit submit to student. And now he has got that comment back to his assignment. Now we're going to take a look at updates versus uh, student messages. So if you want to do a student message, you would simply click on the message button and hit new message and type in their name, or you can go to the members of your course and I could send uh, Mr. Lyson a message. If I could spell his name right, I can send him a message using this tool. There's also a way to send a whole class a message using this tool. And I'm actually going to caution against that. And for that, I'm going to cite the fact that I use this tool, these tools with students a lot, and I have them give me a lot of screenshots out of their programs. And if they have teachers that use a lot of full class messages to students via this direct message tool, uh, they kind of become numb and they kind of consider a spam. And so I actually just asked one of my children, I asked both of, my, both of my children if either one of them had a lot of unread messages and could send me a screenshot. And one of them did, and it's in the slideshow, but there are 77 unread messages in there. So one of the things I have with my students when I first get them is I have them clear that out. And then I I'm careful to use that direct message to be directly to the student and not something I want to send to the whole class. If I want to send it to the whole class, then I use this update tool where I send it out and it comes into their updates. And if you want to set up your course so that that's the first page they land on, then you can do that by going into your course and setting the default landing page on updates. Those then are our different ways to provide student feedback. Now we're going to take a look at how do we get students to go find that feedback. And so I'm going to start with, uh, this is my child that I just referenced and I asked for a picture. That's the grainy quality. He took me a picture of his computer screen upstairs and you can see he has 36 notifications. He has not checked and he has 77 unread Schoology messages. Um, he had some excuses as to how he thinks he gets those via email, but all in all, I have found that many students have 77 or more. And so teaching them how to use that, but also realizing that it doesn't sort like email does, and they can't tell who sent it to them in quite the same way they can if it comes from email or who it got sent to. And so if you use that a lot, they become numb to it. So I use that for individual communication with students where I need to reach just one or two students, and I don't reuse that for whole class. Then we're going to look at finding those grades. And so for that, we're going to go back to Ethan's gradebook, and I'm going to show you some information from his. Here is a look at Ethan's gradebook from Schoology. This is actually me um, looking at the t using a tool that says this is how the course looks to Ethan. And so I'm going to go down. We've only got a handful of, of assignments in this try. Uh, but you can see that there are uh, different symbols in here. So first I want to tell you what those symbols mean. Uh, this is one of the things I go through with my students at the beginning of the year. Uh, if it has a little piece of paper, that means they have made a submittal to an assignment. If it has this little pencil question bubble, that means they have made a submittal to a discussion post. And if it has this little puzzle piece with a pencil, that means they have made a submittal to a quiz. So this is a pretest. You can see it's a, it has no weight to it. It's an ungraded category for me, but I do put it in there so that they can see their scores and they can see their improvement. If it has a little piece of paper and no number next to it, I always tell them that means that they have done their job and they have done the submittal and I need to now do my part and do the grading. And so this one means that there is a submittal but no grade. Beam deflection is an assignment due later this week. He has not yet made a submittal and I have not yet graded his submittal. Up here, I made an assignment just to show you what a rubric would look like. Uh, this was not an assignment we did in class, so I put it in my checking category, which is again a non-weighted category. And you can see there's this little symbol right here. That means that there's a rubric attached. Uh, that helps kids know a couple different things. If they want to see what criteria you're grading them on, they can pop that open and it'll pop open the rubric. In here, I've just got a simple secondary task rubric set of language set up with the bullet points from our secondary task, task rubric. And if they, if this little blue bubble is highlighted, that means that we left them a comment on it and they can pop on that and it'll tell them what the comment was. And so on this one, I said I hand graded the paper copy. And that goes with the fact that there's no little submittal 
there. Uh, so to give him a four, I hand graded something that he handed me is the note I made. If you want to know where the comments go when you make a comment, there are comments show up in the gradebook next to the assignment. So a few minutes ago, we did that grade for Mr. Lyson's assignment, and I wrote the note that said, include a photo for your next assignment. That is where this shows up. So in order to have students find those, I have them go to their grades, uh, and then I have them type that in. You can see I've excused him from all of the rest of the assignments for the year. This is my robotics course, which is not a class, but an after school activity. And I use assignments to track different things that I need students to submit for my paperwork. In order to have students see all the annotations and submission activity notes that you sent to them, they have to somehow know that they're there. And you can do that by either teaching your students that this is how you'll communicate information back to them and just getting them in the habit of that, uh, or if you don't use this a lot, but you want to make sure they look at it, you can, I sometimes put it up here in the comments. So I will say, see annotations. And then I talk to the class about the fact that when I type that, it means that I put something on your sheet that I want them to see, even though I maybe didn't take any points off of it. And so in this case, I might want him to realize that he left those units off and put a note up there to see the annotations or to see the submission activity to make sure that he gets the information that he needs. Even though I still qualified it as excellent work, there was an omission of a number or a unit that I wanted him to take care of. Finally, I want to talk about a couple of different ways students can go find those assignments if, in fact, you've put annotations or scores on them. One of the ways is that little notification up in the upper right-hand corner. If I click on this one, it's actually mine, even though I'm using the view as Ethan. I can't see his notifications or his mail, so these are actually still my criteria, but his notifications up here, anything that's blue is a live link, so if I graded something, it would have uh, information that I submitted a grade and it would have a link and he could click on that and it would take him to an assignment. You can also go see assignments in the calendar tab and it will take you to any assignment. So I assigned my robotics kids a, a community builder yesterday uh, or today of tell me about your favorite food. Right now I, the only, I only have one of my calendars turned on up here and that is my robotics calendar. So you can find them there or you can go back and you can find them on that grade book. So if I go back to Ethan's grade book, I can click on that Centroids assignment. And once I click into it, it'll pop up and we can go take a look at the assignment he submitted. And he can see the feedback that he got on that assignment. It'll pop up actually with my annotations first and then his assignment will pop up behind it. So then he can see what I typed in there and what information I gave him back so that he can use that for future assignments. With that, here is back to that slide. We looked at notifications. We looked at finding grades and grade comments. Uh, we looked at the rubric and the general assignment. We did not take a look in the quiz questions. You can also put individual comments in a quiz question if you use the quizzes tool then the students would have to go all the way into the quiz to find that. So decide if that seems like something you want to do. And remember, it's extra steps then for the kids to dig in. Um, but there are lots of different ways that you can provide feedback. And I would say choose one that you like that makes sense to you and consistently use that one so that students get used to that. One of our orchestra teachers did a survey with her students because she uses a couple different methods and asked them and they were very divided on which one they liked best and it was kind of divided by grade level so i think it's probably which one they've had the most access to if you have other questions please feel free to drop me an email dracket d-r-a-k-e-t at district279.org look forward to hearing from you i hope the rest of your extended flex learning goes amazing <laughs>